Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are making a simple round system in Roblox Studio. So you see there was an intermission state for five seconds, and then there is a game active state for 15 seconds. Once that runs out, it'll just go back to an intermission state, and which will go back to a game active state, and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's what we're making. It's a simple system. Uh, there's more functionality we can add in the future, like a voting system, or we could add a button that players could click whenever they're ready, and we could prevent the game from starting until all the players are ready, and so on and so forth. So with that out of the way, let's just get started. So what you want to do is you want to go to your starter GUI. You want to add in a screen GUI. We are going to name this GUI to be round GUI. Inside of that, let's add in a text label. Going to name this to be timer label. Want to drag it towards the top center of the screen and let's scroll down like we always do and adjust the size because it uses offset as the default value we want to use scale so 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 and then now we can position and resize and adjust this however we want and it will use the scale property let's get rid of the background so just turn the background transparency to one. Scroll down and let's adjust our font to be for Doka one. We'll make it bold. We will set the text just to be uh, enter mission. Yeah, we'll just say intermission. It doesn't matter. We're going to override it in the script. So the text color red. Text size. We'll do 52. Text stroke transparency. Turn it down to zero. Or you don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. So we have an outline. And... That should be good. Uh, you need to make, let's make a local script inside the round GUI. And we are going to call this, oops, we are going to call this timer script. Get rid of the hello world and put a comment at the top for what the script is. And yeah, so what you also want to do is we, we're going to need a remote event. So you want to go to the replicated storage and you want to add in a remote event. Name it update timer event. Then we need a server script. So go to your server script service, add in a script. And I'm going to name it round system server script. I'm going to put a comment at the top for what the script is. Round system script server side. And all right, let's start with our server script. So first thing we want to do is get a variable for our round dur duration. We'll do 15 seconds. Just for testing purposes, we need an intermission duration. And we'll do five seconds again, just for testing. Set that to whatever you want. Local is round active, will be false by default. And we need a table for all the players in the round. Need to get a reference to our replicated storage.
Google's game, colon, get service, replicated storage. And now we need to grab that remote event that we made. And we're going to need to use forward declarations uh, just because uh, with Lua it's like a top to down or top to bottom approach and you can't call functions that are like below the, the function in the script that you're calling it from. So we've got to use forward declarations. Uh, I know that doesn't make any sense, but it's kind of hard to explain. You'll see what I'm talking about though in just a few minutes. So we need to declare intermission, local start round, and local end round. Now we need a function to update the timer and round status for all the players. So update the timer and round status for all players. And this will be local function update timer. And we are passing through a time remaining. And we also want to pass through our round status. And inside this function, we will say update timer event, fire all clients, and pass through the time remaining and the round status. And below that, this is where we start forward declaring the variables that we made above and turning them into functions. So we will just Put a comment here because this is the intermission function and intermission equals function and inside that we will say is round active equals false and we will print intermission next round starts in outside the quotations we will say dot dot intermission duration dot dot quotes space seconds then we want to update the GUI timer every second and send intermission Status. And then we need a for loop in here that is for i equals intermission duration comma one. That's where we are counting down to. And we're doing it in increments of negative one, uh, which just means we're counting backwards. Do. And we will say update timer i comma enter mission and then we would just want to wait one second and outside of that for loop we will start the round after enter mission and so we will just say start round we have an error on that it's because we've got to forward declare our start round function so let's do that now So we will say start round equals function and we will say is round active equals true. We will print round started and we need to grab all the players in the round. Let's see I did player in round. We, it needs to be players in round or it doesn't need to be but you know it makes more sense that's 
what it, it's it's more accurate to say players game dot players get players and we need another for loop to update the GUI timer every second and to send the game active status so update the GUI timer every second and send game active status so for i equals round duration comma one comma negative one do and then inside that it's just update timer pass through i and game active then we want to wait one second And in the round after time is up. So just end round, which is going to give us another error because we've got to forward declare the end round function. So we will say end round equals. Uh, first, let me do a comment for end round function and round equals function and inside that we just say is round active equals false and we print round ended and then players in round equals curly brackets and then we want to start the or just start intermission after the round ends and so we will just say intermission and then outside that we just got to start the first intermission whenever the game starts start the first intermission when the game starts and so we just say intermission and that should be it for our server script but we need to do our client script that's in our uh, screen GUI our round GUI which is which is a screen GUI uh, but this is a short script so let's just get to it we just say local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage need to grab that remote event update timer event equals replicated storage wait for child update timer event and then we need to grab the timer label so we'll say local timer label equals script uh, parent dot or colon wait for child timer label and then we need a function to update the timer label with the round status and time so we just say local function update timer on client pass through the time remaining and the round status and timer label dot text equals round status space dot dot space quotes space dash space time remaining colon space quote space dot dot space time remaining great outside of that function below it we need to connect the remote event to update the GUI whenever the server sends the time and the round status so connect the remote event 
to update the GUI when the server sends time and round status. And so we just say update timer event uh, on client event colon connect and just pass through the update timer on client. And I believe that's everything we need. Let's test it out. Hit play, got intermission, time remaining, started at five. Then game active, time remaining, started at 15. Let's make sure it goes back to intermission once it reaches zero. And it did, so that's wonderful. Everything is working the way that we want it to, the way that we need it to. And we're very happy with this. This is a very simple round system, but it's effective. Uh, if you wanted to do specific things, you would just go to your intermission. Like if you wanted something to happen whenever the intermission started, you would just come to this intermission function and you would just add it in, add it in here. Um, like somewhere in here, uh, you could do it either before or after the for loop. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I don't think it matters. I think you just need to put it before the start round. Um, yeah, same thing for the start round. Uh, if you wanted to add in some functionality to do whenever a round starts, you would just add it here. Whenever a round ends, you could just add some functionality here. Um, if there's anything specific you want to see, let me know in a comment and I'll be glad to try to make a video about it and extend this functionality of this round system. I'll make a part two or part three or however many parts is necessary to do what you guys want to do. So yeah, let me know if there's anything you want to see and that will conclude this video. Please consider liking and subscribing that really helps me out it also helps me out for you guys to watch my videos all the way through um so if you watch this all the way through i really do appreciate it check out my patreon i'll put the i'll put this on my patreon you can get it for free um and yeah that'll do it for this video guys i will see you in the next one